Hi, and thank you for joining us. Today I'm taking a look at a sexy beast. Not me, obviously. Um, instead, Two Hands Wineries, um, Sexy Beast Cabernet Sauvignon 2015 from the McLaren Vale in South Australia. Um, so, um, Two Hands, quite a highly regarded Australian winery, relatively um, recently um, founded. Um, I think it was created in 1999, their first vintage was 2000, uh, working very much on a sort of a negotiable basis, so, so buy, largely buying fruit and, and making small batch, high quality wines in that situation. Um, originally set up by uh, Michael Twelftree and um, Richard Mintz to, um, to be creating small batch wines and, and aiming for really high quality. Um, in honesty, I find their, their portfolio just a little bewildering. There's, there's a, a sort of a flagship range of things like Ara and Aphrodite um, at a top level. And then they have some um, single vineyard wines, which are um, excellent quality. Um, and then um, below that, th there's a, a set of wines called the Garden Range, so things like Bella's Garden, and they um, highlight the regional character, sub-regional characteristics within areas such as the McLaren Vale and the Barossa, um, and there are six wines in that range. And then sit, sitting sitting below that is more sort of a, a, a volume range. They have the picture label, um, such as the, the Sexy Beast, another one called Gnarly Dudes. They're all quite um, sort of way out their names. Um, I mean, for instance, Deer in Headlights Shiraz is, is, is one of them. Um, but with quality very much as a um, to the fore in, in, in their winemaking in general. Um, so the name Sexy Beast, uh, yeah, perhaps slightly unusual, but I think it's actually quite a, a good summation of the style of um, McLaren Vale Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, McLaren Vale sits uh, sort of somewhere climatically between um, the limestone coast and Kunawara to the south, where you, it's very cool and you can make elegant style Cabernet Sauvignons or, or somewhere like um, Western Australia in the Margaret River again where, where the style can be quite elegant and structured and the sort of the warmth of the Barossa Valley where really uh, unless you've got an exceptional site it's it's unusual to get um, Cabernet Sauvignon to work successfully. Um, McLaren Vale sits somewhere in between that because it's, it's, it's nearer to the coast than Barossa Valley but it, it's still quite warm um, and so gives you a sort of a rich opulent style to Cabernet not necessarily a structured style but one where the fruit is to the fore and, and the winemaking for this wine I, I don't know a lot about it I, I have to say um, but has, what I do know is that it seems to be to try and emphasise the, the, sort of the maintenance of that fruit so the wine is um, fermented in open fermenters with um, regular pump overs at the height of fermentation to try and extract as much colour and flavour and then it, it gets run off into, um, into French oak barrels uh, but not being ba they're not barriques, they're smaller, uh, larger than that, they're hogsheads, um, so larger barrels and only 10% um, of those are new and the rest are sort of up to seven years old. Um, seasoned oak. So um, the fact that it's French oak means that the oak influence won't be as um, intense as if it was American oak and the fact that they're predominantly seasoned means that there's not going to be a huge um, oak influence on the wine here. It, it is the fruit that should be to the fore in this. So let's have a taste and see if that um, fulfills what I've said. Um, first thing to say looking at the colour is that you've got a nice depth there. It's virtually opaque. It's a ruby red but there's, a, there's quite a clear purple rim, um, more red purple than a blue purple. I mean, this uh, 2015, so it's, it's nearly seven years old. Um, so, you know, aging a little. Uh, when you swirl the wine, there are um, tears form quite reg readily, and there's a slight staining as well in terms of, so, you know, nice uh, depth of pigmentation and good, good viscosity. Um, the wine's alcohol, the, the label varied. Um, there was a back label, and I noticed it was actually stuck on over another back label, and, and thus I couldn't resist the um, opportunity to, to tear that off. So the, the um, label applied on the top says that this is 13.8%, and the label below that said that it was 14.1%. So it, it's about 14% alcohol, so that would 
add to the wine's um, viscosity there. Um, let's have a look at the aromas, shall we? Yeah, uh, that's bearing out what I was saying about the richness and the ripeness of McLaren and Pearl Fruit. You've got, initially, you've got some quite classic um, Bordeaux and Australian aromas. Um, or, sorry, Cabernet Sauvignon and Australian aromas, not from Bordeaux, obviously. Um, so you've got a black y note there. I would say black currant as opposed to cassis, because for me, cassis has more of a sort of a sharp edge to it. Um, this is sort of riper black currant with leafy touches, minty hints, and perhaps even a touch of eucalypt as well there, which is your sort of Australian typicity coming through there. Um, looking beyond that, the core of the fruit is much more black currant, loganberry, that sort of richness, almost to a, almost to a sort of a, a, a licoricey density. Um, and behind that, there are slight spicy touches, maybe a, a hint of cedar, um, maybe a little bit of graphite, but but not to the extent that you'd get with a much more cool climate wine. This is it, it's the fruit that's very much the foreigner. So let's taste. With the Cabernet Sauvignon, I'd normally expect there to be a rush of acidity, freshness. This is quite different actually. At the front you've got quite a, a rich, ripe, intense, opulent fruit that's almost to a, a sort of a, a, a raisiny note. Um, there's, there's black fruit there, but um, it's more sort of uh, ripe black cherry through to black olive, sort of slightly leathery notes. Um, going through to a rich core, maybe it's a bit of sort of juicy boysenberry note. Um, but actually the alcohol, as I said, about 14%, is giving some warmth on the back palate. And, and as the tannins are fading, and there are t the reasonable tannins, there's a fair grip there, you're getting a sort of a spicy, slightly cedary grip. It's not particularly astringent, but, but there's a little bit of structure in there, slight graininess. Um, There is freshness, there is acidity, but it comes in after that um, rich dark fruit um, at the same time as a sort of a sort of a chocolatey um, note. There are hints of coffee as well, which I think is is um, showing up the oak that displays itself more as cedariness on the finish. So the finish is a, a sort of a more earthy, chocolatey coffee and um, that sort of slightly savoury black olive sort of notes. There, there is some, some juicy black cherry there as well. But the, the cedariness is sort of making that a little bit more savoury. Flavours are lasting reasonably well. I mean, I'm, I'm saying there's warmth from the alcohol. It doesn't leave the finish hot because there is enough uh, fruit that that's there. But it, it, as I say, it's that sort of um, savoury um, black olive tiny touch sort of chocolatey smoothness on the finish as well. This, this is an opulent Cabernet Sauvignon. As I say, it's seven years old, so it, I, I wouldn't think that this wine needed keeping any longer. The, the tannins are smooth, the flavours are rich. I'm sure you could keep it longer, but I think this is fully mature. It's a very enjoyable drink now, and this is what it's meant to be, sort of uh, luscious, opulent, um, open and ripe. So yes, thank you for joining us. That's um, Sexy Beast two, 2015 McLaren Bell Cabernet from Two Hands. Goodbye now.